So welcome to 10 Minutes with Tamara. And if you would please introduce yourself, that would be wonderful. Thank you. My name is Janice Ayotte and I am from Montreal, Canada. Do you speak French? Is that your native language? I do speak French because you have to speak French to live here pretty much to have a job. Um, but my first language is not French. I um, actually used to spend a lot of time with my grandparents when I was little. So under Italian probably was some of my first words and then English. Because you have an accent. Uh, I do. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Canadian accent. It sounds like I don't know. I have like an aggressive Italian accent. People are always like, Are you from New York? And I'm like, No, I'm just Italian. Like this is just my accent. <laughs> I, I keep thinking, well, maybe I'll get a mom in France and and see sa passage pour parler français, mais ça fait des yeah. années depuis j'ai parlé français parce que j'habite à Paris. Uh oh. ça fait 30 on May. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, I've lost it. I don't really speak French anymore. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's better than, no, it's not better than mine, but I don't speak French very often. I have one daughter. Her name is Maya, and she was born on Christmas. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, and she's going to be three this year. She was diagnosed with autism right before her second birthday, so I, my whole world was sort of flipped upside down. Um, and right now I'm only working a couple of hours from home um, every day so I can just keep up with her appointments. Like she usually has like 15 appointments a month. She's in therapy 16 hours a week. Um, I'm, on, I'm working with doctors in the States. I'm sort of just covering all my bases and I can't work while caring for her and making sure that she's getting the best attention, care, everything. So I actually did have my daughter, um, her blood tested for lead. Her neurologist agreed to do it, no problem. And it was 0.03. That's great. That's awesome. I was super happy. I was like, okay, perfect. Something to cross off my list. But now, um, so my daughter goes to a special needs school in uh, very near downtown Montreal. And Montreal is known for some lead issues and whatever. Um, the issue is, so the building is, is from the 1960s, I think 1960. And they've been doing renovations in that building on and off for the past three years. Um, and my daughter's only been at that school for less than one year. But just recently, they started doing major renovations over the past, I would say, three months. And all of a sudden, something just clicked in my head. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, lead concern, lead concern. I just started freaking out. So I don't know the exact details of the renovations. Um, I think they just, like, broke down a bunch of walls and, like, everything on the first floor. They're making it, like, wheelchair accessible because all the kids have special needs and their needs vary drastically. So I don't actually know the specific details, but it looks like they really, like, demolished the inside of the – like, it looks like it was completely taken down and it's going right back up. What am I supposed to do? Like, she's there for 16 hours a week, and – if the damage is already done in terms of like the lead dust and whatever, like, is there anything that I can ask the school to do? So the school's awesome. They're very receptive to my criticisms about everything. Um, I'm just wondering what can I do if they did not do the renovations correctly? They are actively having renovations happening in a school with toddlers who are going to class right now. Yeah. That's wrong. In America, you're not allowed to do renovations while children are in the building. So if children are, they have to do uh, renovations on pre-1978 uh, child-occupied facilities where a child spends more than six hours a week. They must do those when children aren't present. They aren't necessarily required to do clearance testing, but some of the better school districts do do clearance testing. Unfortunately, I don't know um, who you could contact in Canada, but I'll do some research and see what I can find. So I think in terms of what to do about the school, um, it's it's... You know, there's there's layers. There's like what to do politically, what to do immediately, um, yeah. and it, it's it's a hard set of conversations. I think um, what we as parents should encourage the school administrators to do is to do dust wipe samples. So sure. that's your best way to find out if there is a dust hazard from the demolition, and you want them to do those dust wipe samples underneath radiators, behind doors, under book cabinets. Because the interesting thing is a school that has no carpet on the floor, the one thing that, that's generally pretty clean is the floors, especially with COVID-19 happening now. Right. You know, they're doing a really good job of thorough disinfection and um, cleaning of floors. And they normally do that as well. It's rare to see a high floor dust level. And you want the floor dust levels to come in below five 
micrograms of lead in the dust per square foot of flooring. So the thing that they might miss is the under the bookshelves that don't normally move and the under the radiators. And you wanna test there because if the renovations cause lead dust, then that those would be the areas that would have captured that dust. And it's unlikely that they would have cleaned under there since right. the renovations. So that's my best uh, suggestion there. The other suggestion would be to get your daughter tested again. When was the last time she had a blood lead test? She had her last test in June. Um, so I have an appointment with her pediatrician uh, tomorrow actually. And it is on my list to ask him for another lead test. But now do I wait until the renovations are finished or do I do it now? Because he might not give me another prescription to do her lead test again. I would get a, a blood lead test now because if there is a hazard now, you've already had a really low blood lead level test. And then yeah. you'll have this in, to have it, you know, in comparison for context. And if she's high now, you pull her out immediately until you resolve yes. this. And I don't think you have any other tool as, as, um, significant as getting a blood lead test for your kiddo right away. When my kids were going to a school where I suspected there was lead dust, I went and talked to other parents and I had about, I think six or eight parents all chipped in together to have a hazard assessor come do a minimal um, hazard assessment of the school common areas. And what we found, and that cost us about $400 and that was, um, that was about, I'm just thinking that was, 13 years ago. Um, and so what we found was really high levels of lead and we presented that to the school and then the school ended up following up and doing a full hazard assessment, which I think cost them like three or $4,000. And they didn't wanna make it public, but um, we got our hands on it and we saw all the hazards in the school and we pulled our kids out of the school, even though it was the best choice for our children at the time. Yeah, and I'm sure as you know, and as you face every day, the problem is that I feel like we're definitely the minority in terms of the knowledge that we have of lead and the dangers of lead. And it makes us seem crazy when in reality, this should be the norm. And it's very hard to try to convince somebody who's doesn't isn't aware of the dangers and has no interest in looking into it you should find out if they've done this they may have already done this for the school they might be proactive you don't know they might you know if, if you, <laughs> you're shaking your head so i have a very big distrust for everybody honestly i'm very weary of everybody i'm a bit like everyone's a bit sketched to me i don't know i'm just i always assume that things were not done correctly and, and that's probably bad of me um no it's a good place to start from because it's usually the case, especially when it comes to public buildings that aren't generally regulated, you know? Yeah. Like I brought up my concerns. I was actually talking to a doctor today um, about my lead concerns. And he told me that he knows there's lead in his pipes and he drinks from the tap. And I was just like, this is why I have anxiety. This yeah. is the, th because you, people like you are supposed to be protecting people like me. And you're telling me that, you know, there's lead in your pipes and you're okay with it. And I'm just like, but you do know that no level of lead is considered safe, right? And he was just like, it was just like, it really, it, the anxiety, like just talking about it, it's just that I feel so trapped that we're just like the real minority in this, um, in this world because nobody seems to acknowledge, I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. It's like in the movie, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where you don't know who's on your side and yes. everybody turns into monsters, but <laughs> because like, yeah. you think that they're normal, but they're not. Because yes. So I hope that gives you some information that's helpful in your journey with your school and definitely follow up with me. There's lots of posts on my blog about lead in schools. So look up school on my blog or look up PPS sucks, which is my school system, Portland Public School sucks is the hashtag I did. And you'll see all these posts I've written about my school district and watch the film because there's a scene about lead in schools in the film that that is, I think, very informative and might be helpful. I just want to say that you're actually the reason why I started my sort of non toxic journey. Um, I discovered your website and your blog when I was pregnant. Oh. And that's really what kicked off everything where I just started going a bit crazy about everything, not even just lead, but that is what led me into um, the world of non-toxic and safer and all of those kinds of things. So I literally, you were the first. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, and thanks for being here all the way from Canada. Yes. I really appreciate you talking to me. I really, really do. Tune in next time for, I guess we're going to find somebody from some other country now that we've got Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. I'm looking for a mom in, I think England would be fun or Ireland or where else? Where, you know, Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's just great to have these conversations and let people know that they're not alone in this. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thanks. Later. Bye. Bye. Thank you.